Hey everybody, today we're going to be breaking down how to create this looping motion graphic for Oregon Basketball Ducks win. Let's take a look. Alright, so to make this, knowing that I wanted it to be a loop, typically I'll make loops um, at six seconds long. And so if we go to file, if we go to composition settings and look into this one, uh, I just made it simple 1080, uh, 29 frame rate, and then I made it exactly six seconds, um, which just makes it easy. So click OK there. Then the first thing I did was create a new camera. Uh, sometimes this can get a little bit more complicated, but for this one, the camera isn't going to move, so this one's a little bit easier. Just make sure it's a one-node camera and don't enable depth of field. Um, everything else doesn't really matter because you'll adjust it um, on this next part. So then you're going to create a null object, which if you right-click anywhere, you can go to new, null object. Um, and here's how we can make we can control the camera in 3D. So I'm just going to label this camera control. Um, from watching other tutorials, this seems to be the best practice in terms of controlling the camera. And so all I did as that final step was just to parent link the camera to the camera control. And so now any function, anything that we do to manipulate the camera control is going to move the camera. So that's all I did for right here and here. So next we're going to bring in our text in the two logos. So for the text you'll see that it's in kind of the middle of this animation and we have logos on the left and on the right. Um, the reason why there's logos on both sides is because that way it makes it really easy to just end on the exact same spot. And the way that the logo is moving, I didn't animate all three individually. They're just parent linked to this duck swim one. So everything that I do to animate the duck swim these move alongside it, which makes it really easy and simple, where all I have to do is animate just this line right here. So if we look at how I animated it, we're going to be looking at the speed graph. Um, if you don't see the speed graph, and you see like a value graph, which looks like this, um, I'm more familiar with the speed graph, so I like to look at it with the speed graph. Basically, the first thing I did was make sure each keyframe was easy eased, which you can go from here, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then from there, I made sure that it started at the O, it speeds up, and then starts to slow down, where you see ducks, speeds up. So and then slows down so where you can see wind. So it really kind of emphasizes both the ducks and then the wind and then speeds up again to end at the O. I made sure that the O ended at the same exact spot and the way I did that was I went to the beginning and I just duplicated looks like it's this one and I set it to not linked so that way it just stays in the same spot and then I go to the end and if it lined up I just you can just keep moving this last keyframe until it perfectly lines up and when it is you just delete it and you know that it's gonna perfectly loop when you get to the end so now this is all set up and it's ready for our next element. So if we bring in Paul White, 
here. You'll see he flies in, he kind of tosses the ball, and then he flies off. So, in order to simplify this for my own workflow, I made sure that he is in within a pre-comp. And this just means that it's in it's in its own project. So that way you can animate him because you'll see I'm going to go into the puppet warp next. But I was it we can have the puppet warp happening inside and then we can focus on the movement of him flying in separately. That way you're not trying to animate everything at once and it just makes it a lot simpler. So going into here, you'll see that this isn't all just one cutout. Um, I created three different parts. And so if we isolate these, you'll see that the first is just his arm. And what I did is I clone stamped some extra parts of his arm because you'll see in this next one, I had the vision of him kind of extending his arm back in order to toss the ball. And with just one photo, part of that arm is not revealed. So I just needed to extend the arm to make sure that as I moved it back, there would be uh, more arm to fill it, which is kind of really adds. It's subtle, but it adds to the 3D feel of him. Because as you can see, toward, when I get towards the end of this animation, more of that arm is getting revealed as I kind of warp it. You'll see. So that's just the importance of kind of adding in a little bit if you know that it's specifically going to be moving. Um, so then, if I, since I already had the arm, this part of the arm cut out, I didn't want that to be included in this portion. So then I just took his body without the arm because we want it to be isolated. And then finally, I cut out the basketball. So then, all you have to do is use right here is the puppet position pin tool. And so what you're going to do, particularly with these two, with the body, is if we hit U, and we're going to see the puppet pins here. If I click on deform, you'll see here are the three points that I'm manipulating the arm with and so I just start off simply by clicking on each point typically you want to follow the joints of the person so that way your pup your puppet pin is looks the most realistic and then I'm just moving here the first pin so I really just want the wrist to move and then overall, over the course of the five seconds, I want kind of all of it to stretch a little bit because he's pushing the ball out. Here there's a lot more points. So we have his face, we covered kind of this arm, and then we isolated each leg with different points. So you just kind of pick your starting point here and you lay down, you click all the points. Wherever you click is going to be the starting point, so make sure the playhead is at where you want to begin the movement. And then I went to the end, and here I pushed them out. So you can just kind of move them and see. So if I move this, you'll see, ooh, that's, that's way too much. But you can play around with it and make sure that it's in a good spot and looks realistic and that you haven't warped it too much. Um, watching other tutorials, uh, the main key was to make sure you don't go too far um, because it's really easy to push these too far and it looks really warped and skewed and unrealistic. So the less the better. Um, and then finally, with the basketball, I just manipulated the position and rotation. So I kept it where it was and then I kind of wanted to create an arc, so I used a couple of different keyframes. 
and then I'm just slightly rotating the basketball as well as moving it along this line. And so if you bring them all together, we kind of have this final slow-mo puppet warp. And so then if we come back here, you can see that's looking pretty good. And so the next part I noticed was when he's in front, it just slightly makes it hard to read the lettering. And so I duplicated the duck swing that's, in, that's a solid, and I put it on top of the cutout. So here you can see we chose to do the outline. And if the outline's too thick, you can just adjust it right here. So if it's like really thick, you can just bring it back down to three. I chose to do three. Because you just want it thin, which just nicely highlights uh, the text and keeps it legible. So you, you might have noticed here the basketball disappears. And that's because within this comp, with the keyframes that I did to make hit Paul White move in, and then kind of stay there. So there's very, very minimal movement here. And then I have him fly away. You'll see like the basketball naturally gets cut off on the comp here. And so then I brought back in the basketball and lined up its position. So that way when it naturally crosses over, it's still there. I think if I just extended the comp here to be wider we would have eliminated that uh, issue but that was just a quick workaround um, when making it and so now when we include all of that we have this loop which looks pretty good as it is it's it's basically done um, but the final thing i wanted to add was a looping smoke and with this it's actually just a normal uh, JPEG that I found online. Um, and the main thing I did was I used motion tile. The motion tile is for the end. So that way I can, it's basically going to mirror. You can see it starting to mirror right here. Um, and that's just in order to make it so I can bring it back to its original position. And then all I did was for the slow moving smoke, um, just with position and scale, just kind of moving and stretching it. Um, so that way it looks like smoke. And then the final thing, to hide the motion tile, you want to add uh, enable motion blur. So make sure that you've toggled this button on and then make sure you click this. That's just going to make it motion blurred and you'll see it's not that motion blurred right now but the moment it starts to loop you get the motion blur to kick in and that really helps to hide the seam which is right here. And there's also a seam here. You can see it's symmetrical. So now it's bringing it back again. And it's going to perfectly loop. Again, same visual thing. Just keep checking. See if it jumps at all. And if it doesn't, you're good. Um, and if you didn't know how to get this motion tile right here, and just drag it on, you'll get kind of this panel. And... Within here, you're basically just moving the tile center in order to create that movement. So you can see it's moving this way, and you can just keyframe it through this. 
Um, and the beauty of this is because the camera's not moving, we can treat the smoke the same way that we do the background and you don't need to animate it at all. So there's no position keyframes or anything like that. Uh, we can just put it into the scene and it's gonna be good. So then the final thing to bring it all together is the smoke's a little bit like, it's pretty prominent. And so I'm, I just added a curves adjustment. You can see it helps the smoke to blend into the background more as well as bring out um, our athlete here. And so um, you can find curves, just type in curves and add that onto an adjustment layer. You can create an adjustment layer, new adjustment layer, and just make sure that's on top above everything else. And that's just gonna help to bring the graphic together. Um, and then you're good to go. Hopefully this was helpful and helped you what kind of walk you through how to make something like this. Um, the main points are to utilize the parent linking. Um, so that way you only have to do in a movement once for remember with the um, with the text here, everything's moving with it. So you only have to do that animating once. And then with the puppet pin make everything inside of a pre-comp so that way it just simplifies the animations and yeah thanks for uh thanks for watching